Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely um, that's definitely going to be the case for sure. I mean, speaking of Jordan Peterson, I understand. Well, how's he doing, by the way? I don't know if uh, last time I spoke, um, I heard he's obviously going through a pretty difficult time right now. I don't yeah, know so I can't publicly, get into but, anything. I, yeah. I, yeah, I can't get into anything that's not really public at the moment. I saw him a couple months ago. We we emailed in the last couple of days. He's getting better. You know, he got hooked on antidepressants, which he was, by the way, there's a little confusion. People seem to think that he was like secretly taking these things and then it just got worse. He was open about it. He would talk about it at the events we would do. He would talk about being on a small amount of benzos. We were on the tour and he got a call. I was with him at lunch that his wife had what they thought at the time was terminal cancer. He continued throughout the tour. She continued through much of the tour with us. Uh, and then at some point he started upping his dosage as things got more and more bleak for his wife and he did get hooked. Uh, and one of the weird things that happens with uh, these benzos is that you they can have almost a reverse reaction. So you're taking them for anti-anxiety, but you basically like pass a threshold where then suddenly you're getting more anxiety. And that's that's what happened to him. But he is getting better. He's putting the finishing touches on the follow up to 12 rules for life. Uh, uh, and he'll he'll be better and he'll be stronger. But it's it's still going to be a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad the I know he's speaking a lot about the way he's changing his his diet, anything that he can really just to get back. I know that he's doing the carnivorous diet. I actually went to I didn't go to school with her, but uh, Michaela, I, we live in the same building in Montreal, actually, when I went to school huh. at, uh, at McGill University. And I don't think she was in that diet at that time. But um, I know that is certainly uh, helping him lift his spirits a lot. And I know you did a lot of tours with him. Uh, I'm curious to know, are there certain parts cities or certain parts around the world where you guys get the most amount of love, I guess, when you guys were doing these speaking tours? Yeah, it was interesting because what we found was that it almost was reverse of what you'd thought. So if we were to go to a place that, let's say, was like a little more conservative in nature, you'd think, well, that's where Jordan's fans are mostly or libertarian in nature. That's where they're going to like Dave the most. Those crowds were First off, every crowd that we had, every single one without exception was a, was a great crowd. We never had a bad crowd. I don't even like the idea of a bad crowd. You know, when I was doing stand up, a lot of comics would be like, ah, it's a bad crowd tonight. And I'd be like, well, it's not really a bad crowd. You're just not a great comic. Like if you got to take a great you, you got to take a bad crowd and make them good. That's your yeah. job. So it's very yeah. rarely the crowd. But when I say that, it was like we just had explosive crowds wherever we went there. It was just a, a love fest. But you would have thought that the more conservative leaning places is where we would have been loved the most. But actually, it was the reverse of that, because it was the lefty places where they needed the message the most, because the mm. people who would come were sort of like refugees. So I would make a lot of jokes about that, that this was like their secret meeting place, basically. So places that are really lefty in nature, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland. So that's, you know, sort of Pacific Northwest uh, kind of stuff. They were really rabid there. The crowd was really, really excited there. The shows we did in Florida were amazing. You know, then we bounced across the world. So we did a whole bunch in Australia. The Australian crowds were amazing. Uh, we did two shows in Stockholm, Sweden that sold out in two minutes. We were only supposed to do wow. one show. It sold out literally in a minute. So they had to add another one. Then that one sold out in a minute. Um, you know, everywhere we went, it was it was just unbelievable. I mean, how cool to think that you know what an 18 year old in Canada is thinking is similar to what a 40 year old woman in Texas is thinking and that's similar to what you know a 60 year old in Sweden and you know three guys in Australia and just all and it and it it had uh, it crossed ideological lines you know it wasn't really about politics it crossed socioeconomic lines there were people that had a lot of money people that were poor it, you know it crossed everything because what he was talking about really was how do you fix yourself so that you can get this world back into some state of order? And mm. uh, clearly, we, we could use it these days. 